and welcome back to the shop. In the last video, I showed you how I made this small block plane. Today, we're going to dive a little deeper into how the etch was done. To start off, you're going to need some salt water. The internet says to use a 1 to 5 ratio. I just chucked a bunch of salt into some water. That seemed to work okay. The next thing you'll need is a power supply. I used a 12 volt DC power supply. If you don't have one of those, you can also use a battery, like a 9 volt battery. Make sure you're using a DC power supply, not an AC. And then you also need a mask. I used a vinyl cutter to make my mask. Uh, if you don't have a vinyl cutter, you can also use like electrical tape and just cut out your design with like say an X-Acto knife. Alternatively, you could also use nail polish to paint your design on there. Anything that's not covered by the mask is gonna be eaten away during the etching process. Then there's the requisite PPE, safety goggles, ventilation, gloves, all that sort of stuff. Whatever fumes are coming off of the etch is rather nasty. You don't want to be breathing it in, and you certainly don't want to get any of it in your eye. And also, you're dealing with electricity. Be careful with it. Um, it can kill you, and it's going to hurt the entire time. One last thing you'll need is some cotton balls or a Q-tip, and that is what helps carry the electrical current from your power supply through the salt water and then onto your piece that you're etching. Now that that is out of the way, we can start on the etching process. You'll begin with sanding. I did a bulk of the sanding before the etch to minimize the risk of sanding through that etch if any major sanding needs to be done to get out deep scratches or anything like that. My sanding schedule was 100, 220, and then 400. You can go higher or lower, it just depends on the look that you're going for. So once everything is sanded, you need to clean it. Now to do the actual etch, go connect one lead from your power supply and clip it onto the piece you're working on. The other lead gets connected to your cotton ball, and then the cotton ball gets dipped into the salt water. So the way I etch mine was I dipped the applicator, I set it on top of the piece I was gonna etch, I held it there for a few seconds, I lifted it up, I moved it over to a new spot, set it down, held it there for a few seconds, and then just repeated until I had covered the entire surface. So now is the time to clean everything really well. At this point, I go back and sand everything again. This helps just to clean up any lingering surface rust, remove any scratches that may have occurred during the etching process, and it helps the etch to look just a little bit more crisp. And for this last sanding, I use 600 grit. To take the etch one step further, you can darken the background to actually help everything stand out. So I used some gun glue. Now at this point, sand it one more time. I went with 1500 grit sandpaper and again backed but with a hard backer. So I was just trying to clean up that top surface to remove that bluing agent. Uh, the hard backer helps to keep the paper from softening the edges or dipping into the background as you're sanding. Finally, I apply a little bit of oil or some wax to the surface just to help prevent rust and the etching is all done. The etching process I found to be fairly accessible and the etch itself seemed rather easy. The hard part for me was more so in learning new skills to develop the mask and the use the vinyl cutter. Really to do this you don't need a lot of equipment. Most of it you might already have laying around the house. Uh, you know, a 9 volt battery and some salt out of the cupboard and some water and you're ready to start etching. Um, the mask is really the only tricky part at that point, and if you've got some had nail polish, you have everything you need. So thank you for tuning in to this quick how-to, and I will catch you on the next one.